Welcome everyone. Come on in. This is a very exciting day. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Beth Stokes. I'm the Executive Director of Episcopal Community Services. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today for yet another incredible achievement. And I really want to focus on that achievement um, in the expansion of permanent supportive housing for people who are experiencing homelessness. As many of you know, the Diva Residence was the second San Francisco project to be awarded home key funding in round one. Um, Home Key has played a pivotal role in our ability to swiftly and effectively create holistic solutions to address homelessness at its root causes. And ECS is honored to have been a leader in the implementation of this program since its inception. I would like to sincerely, sincerely thank Mayor Breed and Supervisor Peskin for their unwavering leadership throughout this entire process. Without their dedication and support, this project would not have been possible. The Diva Residence is special for many reasons. Located in the heart of the city, as all of you know who, who came here this morning, this afternoon, the Diva Hotel has actually long been a pillar for the community, providing a safe and welcoming space for visitors and residents alike to lay their heads. Over the decades, the Diva Hotel has morphed to meet the demands of the guests that it serves. In the years since uh, the years spent rebuilding since the 19, 1906 earthquake, the Diva initially provided housing for long-term residents until the 1980s, when San Francisco underwent the first of many techno technologically driven transformations. As the city changed, so did the Diva, ultimately becoming a boutique tourism hotel serving an international clientele of travelers wanting to experience all that San Francisco has to offer. Fast forward to 2020, the world experienced a once-in-a-lifetime public health crisis. And the Diva once again became a haven for the community, providing life-saving shelter to our most vulnerable residents, as this was a shelter-in-place hotel initially. As I stand before you today, I am thrilled to announce, after acquisition in 2020 and two years of rehabilitation, the Diva is now open and provides 122 stable, dignified, permanent homes for formerly homeless people. Thank you. We'll pause. Yes. The majority of, of this renovation took place during a difficult time. And uh, this project is a beaconing testament to successful collaboration that withstood multiple trials. I want to acknowledge and thank our partners who helped restore the Diva, the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing. Thank you. Clap, clap. <laughs> thank you, Shireen. Mick Spadden for your leadership, thank you so much. And I want to thank the Mayor's Office of Housing Community Development for their leadership, um, the Housing Accelerator Fund, who's in the room with us today, and the California Department of Housing and Community Development, who helped provide the funding to acquire this property. We're proud to see that the special building continues to live up to its legacy in service to San Francisco, and would like to thank all of you for joining us in this celebration. So thanks. Now I'd like to hand it off to uh, Executive Director uh, Shereen McSpadden from the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing. Shereen. Thank you so much, Beth, and congratulations. This is a really exciting day. You know, when I think about um, the family members I've had and the friends who I've grown up with in San Francisco who have become homeless, this is what I hope for for them. I really hope for a safe environment, a beautiful environment like this where people can heal and really heal from the trauma that they've experienced on the street. So this is wonderful. And I wanna thank all of the partners who are involved, certainly Episcopal Community Services. Um, wanna thank Mayor Breed and Supervisor Peskin for their leadership, uh, the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development and the Housing Accelerator Fund for making this possible with, um, from a financing perspective. It just really takes a lot of partners to make something like this work. And I think people don't understand all of the work that goes into pr providing a home for somebody who's been homeless. So this is a very exciting day. I'm looking forward to the tour. And I don't want to take too much time because I know the mayor has a, has a quick schedule today. I just want to turn it over to Mayor Breed, who's provided so much leadership for people experiencing homelessness and, and really has helped spearhead this acquisition strategy and, and really helped us take advantage of things like home key so that we can so that we can ultimately help end homelessness so mayor breed passing it over to you well first let me just um thank beth and episcopal community services 
for their partnership with the city and county of San Francisco. We talk about all of the things that we are trying to do to address homelessness in San Francisco, and we could not do that without partners that know how to do this work, because this is very difficult work, and we have made extraordinary gains. And oftentimes, what you constantly hear in San Francisco is the problems and to clean up the city and how are we helping the homeless and what are we doing or what aren't we doing, what are, what we are not doing. And today I want to just give us a bigger perspective before I talk about the DIVA to make sure people understand the significance of what we have been able to do in this city despite a global pandemic. So since I took office in 2018, we have been able to help over 10 thousand people exit homelessness permanently. That's 10, 000, over 10,000 people who have not re-entered our system, who we have not encountered back on the streets, but who have instead been housed in places like the Diva. We did this project Home Key. I just want to just be clear. The governor stole this idea from me and, <laughs> and, and other big city mayors because during that time, you know, mayors were really leading the way during this global pandemic. And we had to completely empty, empty many of our shelters uh, because of the congregate uh, living uh, situations. And it was necessary for us to get more creative and find other ways in which we could help get people housed. We went into a situation where we were able to bring people together and work with our hotels and to house people. It was a, a, a process, and it was one that you know we were trying to move quickly on despite our city's bureaucracy. We were able to get a lot of folks housed, and more importantly, it was very expensive, and we asked the governor for support. And that's what we got with Project Home Key. Uh, we got an opportunity to apply for resources and to get the folks who own these buildings to consider selling these projects to selling these buildings to us. And San Francisco, because of how good we are at paperwork, uh, we were able to get $212 million for five projects, including the Diva. And when I think about not just what we've done with Project Home Key to purchase these buildings, to make them permanent supportive housing spaces for the city, you know, before the pandemic, we had about 10,000 permanent supportive housing uh, units all over San Francisco, and now we've added more than 3,000 to that portfolio. So we've seen an over 30% increase in providing those kinds of resources, not to mention what we've invested in vouchers and other things that we've gotten from HUD and resources that we've been able to pull together in order to get people into a better place, our shelter system. I mean, there's so many different layers to this. And I'm really proud of how we've come together despite what people are trying to say about our city to get to this place because even though folks are maybe they have a problem with what they see on the streets, we see success stories in places like the Diva. We see success stories in Glenn Lee who is going to be talking in a moment about their journey and their stories and what happened to them before they found the diva, before they found a safe, affordable place with wraparound supportive services to call home. That is the other side of what San Francisco is doing for thousands of people every single day that needs to be communicated just as much as everything else. That's why this project is so significant. And I wanna really appreciate um, Shireen McSpadden for all of her hard work in not just working with the Mayor's Office of Housing and Eric Shaw is here today and trying to deal with the work necessary to apply for the state funding, to deal with the tax credits, to provide the long-term subsidy that the city has to give to help make sure that we have staff in these particular facilities. All of that work, in addition to the vouchers that we've received, as I mentioned, from the HUD uh, from the housing and urban development from the feds, like all of the things that we're putting together will lead to a better San Francisco and better access to affordable housing so that we can continue to move in the direction that we have. In San Francisco, we were one of the only counties in the Bay Area to see an overall reduction in homelessness by 3.5% and a reduction in unsheltered homelessness by 15% in our last point in time count. 
So despite what the narrative is, San Franciscans are working really hard because of organizations like Episcopal Family Ser Community Services, as well as the Housing Accelerator Fund. I know Rebecca's gonna say a few things in a moment, but we are always excited when we're able to come together and talk about these great projects, but we also need to be reminded of how far we've come because it makes a difference in people's lives. And I couldn't be more proud than to be here today to celebrate the diva. I mean, when they said diva, I got excited. I was, I was thinking, is that where I'm supposed to be living? Is that where all the divas go to live? Um, but more importantly, I was just thinking about the 122 units with 126 individuals who are no longer on the streets, who have a safe, affordable place to call home, who have a community. And I want to express my appreciation to all the case managers and the people who work here, who are going to be working with the community of folks here to make sure that they have the support and resources necessary to not only hold on to their unit, but to thrive in this city. That is a big part of our permanent supportive housing uh, wraparound services, because it's not as simple as giving somebody a roof over their heads. We know we have a lot of challenges in a major city like San Francisco, but it's really about the people who are on the ground who are helping uh, in, in whether it's a doctor appointment or whatever, the services, whatever that means, it is so critical that the staff that will be here every single day gets the support and resources they need to do the jobs that are definitely going to be difficult to do, but very rewarding when we see the difference in someone's life. So I want to express my appreciation and thank you all so much for being here. And now I'd like to introduce Macy Leong, the Senior Director of Housing Development for Episcopal Community Services. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Breed, and thank you, City and County of San Francisco. Um, my name is Macy, and I, it's my honor to be here today. I wanted to thank you and celebrate this milestone with all of the incredible partners in this room for this project who have reimagined this hotel into a new permit supportive housing. This 122 new units with wraparound services is where our amazing residents can now call home. And our residents can also enjoy convenient access in the heart of San Francisco to amenities, services, and public transportation, something that we're very excited in this diverse and welcoming city of San Francisco. Um, I am grateful to be part of this collaborative effort that includes the ability to showcase the unique opportunity to partner with supportive and innovative funding sources, such as the first home key project in the city, and to create housing opportunities and to provide welcoming homes for our residents here. I would like to thank you our incredible leadership, Supervisor Peskin, Mayor Breed, as well as the team and city and county of San Francisco, HSH, MOCD, San Francisco Housing Accelerator Fund, and the state of California, HCD, in partnership with many community leaders on this project. And thank you specifically to our project team, including ECS housing development team, Rebecca, project manager, Julia, and our architect and contractor, Garvalia Architecture and Fine Line Construction, our construction manager, Richard Dunn, our ECS services team, and creative property management team, and many more unsung heroes along the way who have touched this project. Um, the project demonstrates what is possible and represents a variety of the important roles that everyone plays and exemplifies the best when we work together to create holistic, transit-oriented, and service-enriched housing that doesn't just provide a house to live, but the means to live well. So on behalf of ECS Housing Development Team, thank you, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Rebecca Foster, CEO of the San Francisco Housing Accelerator Fund. Thank you very much. Thanks, Macy. Uh, so I wanted to take us back to July 2020, uh, when everyone here was all hands on deck in response to the pandemic. And that was when, as folks have mentioned, the state issued its first home key, NOFA, for $600 million uh, for cities and nonprofit partners to apply to buy buildings to provide housing for the most vulnerable residents at risk of homelessness and experiencing homelessness. A ton of people here got together and put in an application for this building. Uh, that application went in on August 12th and we were waitlisted. 
on October 9th, so yesterday, a few years back, uh, we received the notice that this project was awarded the max amount of funds from HomeKey, uh, $26 million for acquisition and rehab, and another $3 million in an operating subsidy. But these are federal funds, and the condition was we had to close by December 2nd to get those funds. So less than 60 days. And as you can imagine, this beautiful building, which was built in 1912, um, has all of these amazing characteristics about it, and it was built in 1912. <laughs> and closing in 60 days with a purchase agreement to close in 60 days, not full access, we knew, and the ECS team knew, the city knew that there were gonna be challenges that we would, had not yet foreseen. And the building had been being operated, as the mayor mentioned, as one of the city's incredible responses as a room key hotel. And so it was already serving our, the, our most vulnerable neighbors in the building. and. We had less than 60 days to get to that finish line so we could get these funds. And as you all know, <laughs> this incredible team did it, and it took everybody. And after this acquisition, the city has successfully purchased nine buildings, so eight more buildings after this, providing permanent supportive housing for 1,400 residents built on the model that this sprint required here. And what I wanted to highlight about this is the leadership that is required to take risk. And this was a big risk for everybody involved. It was a really big risk for the city. It was a really big risk for ECS. It was a risk for the HAF uh, at all different levels. I mean, Beth and her incredible team and, and their amazing board had to make a decision to take on tens of millions of dollars of debt, become a developer, in the most difficult way possible, acquisition rehab of buildings built in the early 1900s. And half had to convince our board um, to commit to a giant loan that we didn't have the money for. And when we said, we will raise the money in the next two months because we can't not do this. And the city also had to say, we will streamline. We will cut the red tape. We will get on board. We'll commit the funding. And that is leadership and it doesn't come without cost. And it, it's been hard and it will continue to be hard, but the cost of not doing it is so much more significant. So I just wanna say thank you in partnership for taking on this incredible risk. This is what we need to be keep doing and we are doing together. Um, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I am going to introduce um, the board president, Supervisor Peskin. So, welcome. Thank you, Beth. Uh, most of it has been said, but let me just say that this is government at the local and state and federal level working at its best. Uh, if there's a silver lining out of the entire COVID-19 experience, this is part of it. Uh, the government got out of its own way. Uh, Rebecca just described how it happened in record time. Uh, and I want to con contextualize it, which is uh, this is only one. Uh, we did the exact same thing just a few blocks away with over 230 units at the Granada, around the corner at the Post Hotel, uh, all being run by ECS. Uh, and all of them very challenging, not only from a financial risk perspective, not only from what Macy emails my office about all the time relative to the adaptive reuse and bringing them into the dawn of the 21st century, um, but also relative to the challenges of a new population moving into a neighborhood, uh, which is the bread and butter of a district supervisor. Uh, and, and let's be clear, it doesn't come, uh, Alex and I were just having this conversation without its hiccups, uh, but the notion, the underlying notion of supportive is the wraparound services, uh, is the fact that there are case managers on a one to two ratio, thank you, Shireen, uh, that are helping navigate these people that are the new residents. Uh, and our commitment as a city uh, is to make sure that all of these places 
fit in seamlessly. And I want to acknowledge the neighborhood. Uh, they have not been thanked. I want to thank the neighborhood of Union Square, Marissa Rodriguez, and the Union Square Alliance, the Lower Knob Hill Neighborhood Association, uh, for their willingness to work with the city, to work through those hiccups, uh, and to hold the city accountable. Um, to put it in a perspective relative to the home key money that has been a boon for San Francisco, the vast majority of that money has been spent within a few blocks of where we're standing, uh, with real impacts on the neighborhood, um, all of which HSH, the mayor's office, and my office have been working to address, and that we are working through. And just to put that in perspective, over 700 units, the Granada at some 230, this at 122, the Post Hotel, the Tay Navigation Center, and the 7-Eleven Post Street Shelter, over 700 units within a few blocks of where we sit. We should be proud. We've got work to do. That is my commitment. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, it is my honor to introduce Mr. Glenn Lee, who is a resident of the Duke. Mr. Lee, thanks for being here. Good morning. Mayor Breed, Supervisor Peskin, distinguished guests, thank you for your visit this morning and thank you for the opportunity to be a welcome part of the DIVA. Uh, to together, we celebrate what is the achievement of the DIVA, and it's recognized that not only from the larger perspective, but from all of us who live here and some who may not be able to articulate it know that. Uh, Mayor Reed, as you know, and as you all well know here, uh, finding stable housing is a big challenge. Personally, it has been a very difficult one, and one that's caused quite a bit of despair, the emotional scars of which remain to this day. But for the efforts of the many who, out of their hearts, uh, work tirelessly to give it themselves from all walks of life, from all levels of society, from all different professions and skills, who came together, worked tirelessly and compassionately to bring together a solution to this problem. Uh, there are many lessons in life learned here and much appreciation for that. The, the travel to the DIVA has been uh, a long one, but Again, for the efforts of the many, this has been made possible. So all this to say that the diva is a blessing. And it's a blessing not only because of the four walls and the, and the roof and the bed, as important as all that is. It's a blessing because it's an opportunity and a, and a, and, uh, a way to receive the goodness of the staff and Episcopal Community Service, even Caritas Property Management, who give it themselves to not only bring a safe environment, but also build a home and a community for the people that live here. For me, ma'am, <coughs> the success of the DIVA rests primarily in the efforts of Episcopal Community Services. In turn, the success of Episcopal Community Services rests on their four key tenets, the principles that define their mission, which is dignity, respect, integrity, and compassion. Those four components and guide their mission, their mode, their manner. And it is this mission that allows them to face the challenges of building a community and allowing those challenges in their community to find some way, some measure of recovery, stability, and forward development. This is no understatement. It's a big, it's a big step in changing the lives of people on a daily basis. And for that safe environment, for that community, for that home, for all the efforts, for the hearts that are exchanged, uh, I can only say that a blessing that it is, I hope that, and I respectfully submit to you, Mayor, and to Supervisor Peskin, that you would consider the diva as a role model for what supportive housing can be and should be. And I would further respectfully submit that the Episcopal Community Services and the DIVA carry on the vision in the future of what supportive housing can and should be. And I hope that we can all be a part of this working together in that effort. Thank you very much for all your time and your effort this morning.
So I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, and we are going to do a ribbon cutting. Good. Ready? Five, four, three.